So we've all experienced those mornings where everything seems to go wrong. The alarm doesn't go off, the coffee spills, and we can't find our favorite shirt. So it's on these days that we might exclaim, I definitely woke up on the wrong side of the bed. But what does this old saying actually mean? So joining us in the loft to unpack this topic is Dr. Justin Cohen. Justin, welcome back to Afternoon Express. Thanks, she. Great to be here. You look like you woke up on the right side of the bed this morning. I did. I had good sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> so is that true? Can one wake up on the wrong side of the bed? Because I have to say, I've had days where I've had good sleep and I went to bed in a good mood and then I wake up and everything feels like, I don't know, like I just experienced an earthquake. Yeah, and I think a good question to ask yourself at that point is what am I feeling and why might I be feeling this, right? Mm. Uh, and it's going to be different for different people. But the way I see it, we've got five main reasons why you're going to wake up feeling like you got on the wrong side of the bed. And it goes back, right, to how you went to bed. Yes. Right? I mean, if you don't have a good uh, pre-sleep ritual that gets you nice and calm and at ease, well, you may well find yourself not sleeping properly. You could have insomnia uh, or you might even feel that you slept, but you just the quality of your sleep wasn't great. Yes. You know, you, you, you can't park a Ferrari at 250 Ks an hour, right? You've got to slow <laughs> it down, yeah. right? And so, you know, turning off those uh, electronic uh, gadgets half an hour before bed, a bit of relaxation, meditation, uh, something like a warm bath. The ritual is really, really important. So okay. yes, the quality of our sleep is largely gonna be determined by what we do before we go to sleep. And the yes. fact that we got enough sleep, right? So, yes. I mean, did we actually get enough sleep or did we stay up all night, you know, watching television, yes. right? You know what I love about you being here, um, Dr. J, is that you always have these frameworks that makes things easier and puts it into steps. So I just want to acknowledge that. Thank you for that. So research says that apparently workers, employees that start the day in a bad mood, hence not having had good sleep, it shows that that kind of mood and energy transfers right through the day. Is that true? Well, yes. And no, <laughs> because it's up to you mm. whether that happens or not. So, I love of that. course, if you start off the day uh, it, 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 and you're not in a great mood, that can well carry on through the day. But we all know that we can snap out of a mood as well. Now, look, of course, if you're dealing with a major loss, that may not even be appropriate. You might need to actually go through that process. But if it's just that you're feeling uncomfortable, you didn't sleep that great. You see, even we, we spoke of these five reasons. You, yes, you've got what happened the night before. Maybe you didn't have a great night's sleep, right? That's a second reason mm -hmm. why you might not feel up, wake up feeling all that great. But how do you respond to that, right? Yes. So we don't choose everything that happens, right? You might have had uh, some crazy traffic going on or a neighbor making some noise and then you wake up feeling frustrated, resentful, yeah, okay, that happened because of something outside of your control. But how do you respond to that, right? This is the meaning of the word responsibility. It is the ability to respond. Mm -hmm. So we can either you know, throw ourselves to you know, our fate and say, well, it's just gonna be one of those days. Or we can mm -hmm. say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna make a choice to change this. And that's yes. the power that we all have. Oh, I love that. But I wanna ask you this, often when we in a bad mood, we don't always know that we're in a bad mood, right? Mm. We get, we, we, other people speak about <laughs> us being in a bad mood or they mm. accuse us of being in a bad mood. So I want to ask you the simple yet difficult question. How does one know that they've woken up on the wrong side of the bed or they've woken up in a bad mood? Yeah, so this is one of the fundamentals of emotional intelligence, which is self-awareness. Mm. Right. And you're quite right that we can find ourselves in a state without really being conscious of it. And here's the thing. You can't change what you don't acknowledge. Yes. Right. Yes. The first step to shifting is knowing that you're not in the most ideal state. Right. And so this is a process. We actually call this interoception. So we've got perception, which is what's going on outside, and then interoception, which is what is going on inside. How am I feeling right now? Yeah. And those feelings are made up of two things. 
their bodily sensations. You know, this is the thing about emotion. Emotion sounds like this kind of, you know, intangible kind of ephemeral state, but actually emotion is rooted in the body. Mm. So what is going on in my body right now? You, when you're feeling down, we, we talk about feeling down, yeah. your body actually has a heaviness about it, or I'm fe feeling buoyant, you feel this lightness, right? So we want to get in touch with these physical sensations, but they are also linked to thoughts, and this is critical. This is, I would say, the most powerful way we have to shift out of any state is through our thoughts. There's always a thought attached, right? Yes. Because if you take excitement and anxiety, they actually have very similar yes. physiological state, right? You might have the butterflies and the you know little, little bit of in, uh, energy and tingling. Racing well, heart. Racing heart. Yeah. Well, that can either be yay or can be ah, right? Mm. So what is the interpretation that we give to those bodily sensations? And that's how we can actually start that process of transformation. Okay, so uh, uh, you're coming on to the show later again to tell us about how to frameworks give me just one little teaser of how to acknowledge the emotional state that you are in at that moment that bodily state well I, I, as you know Z, I do do like a, a good acronym so I'm going to give you an acronym and we'll give we'll, we'll, we'll start with the first step so this this acronym is called act and okay. although there's three letters there's actually four steps and we'll see why that is later okay but the the a stands for awareness mm. right that is where it all begins and it's waking up and saying okay where am i at right now and uh from there we decide whether there's some shift that we need to make or not oh, i love that thank you so much well it's clear that how we start our day has a huge impact on the rest of our day so stay tuned because dr j will share a few tips on how to find a routine that works for you to help you start your day on the right foot.